welcome to this week's vlog. I'm actually filming this at the end of the week, so all of the footage in this vlog has already been filmed. I was um, just reviewing some footage and realised I hadn't actually done the introduction for the vlog. And I remember at the start of the week thinking, right, I want to sit down and have a do a chatty intro and just talk about how I've not been feeling too great over the past sort of, 45 weeks. Um, and it's amazing how much a week has kind of changed my mood. I'm still going to touch on why I've not felt too great recently, but I definitely don't feel like I want to sit down and have a huge massive like emotional outpouring now because I feel like in such a better headspace. Um, but yeah, over the past I'd say like five weeks, I've not felt great. Like my self-confidence in both like kind of just like my appearance and my work and the things I kind of like put out online has been quite low recently. I think a lot of it kind of stems from the issues I was having with my eyes. Like when this first started about eight weeks ago, I did slowly start to kind of like withdraw myself from online. Um, and as it got worse and worse, I just increasingly withdrew myself from the internet. I didn't want to show my face as much, didn't want to take photos of my face as much or film myself as much. Um, just because like, the sporadity of it was just bugging me so much and not knowing when it would become inflamed. And I know it sounds like such a small problem, but like it just feel, it felt massive to me, um, especially because so much of what I do involves looking at my face. It was the only thing I could really like focus on. Um, and also eye health is important. So even though I say it's a small thing, I think the health of your eyes, the health of your body in general, um, if something's not right, it can feel concerning. So yeah, I think that, just spiralled and then as a result I just started to feel really disconnected from like Instagram and YouTube and just didn't want to like be present in either of those spaces and although I've been continuing doing videos and Instagram bits here and there I feel like I just sort of post things and then I just run away because I just don't I don't know it's it's I can't quite put my finger on the feeling and I can't like I can't 100% like vocalize what it is I'm feeling because I, I can't I don't 100% understand it, but I think part of it is because I've not felt very stable. Like, I'm someone who really benefits from routine. I'm quite a homebody. I don't like when things feel a bit, like, all over the place. And I've felt that recently because I've been doing a couple of different projects that have required me to travel. Um, so I've not been at home much, and that has made me feel really discombobulated. And as a result, I feel like I'm not fully engaged in this space definitely not engaged with Instagram to be honest I'm I feel so fed up with Instagram but that's a whole other that's a whole other run and as someone who used to spend or used to like make sure they set aside time to sit down and engage with the comments and kind of nurture the comment section not being able to do that has given me quite a lot of anxiety which is then sort of also made me feel really guilty as well because I feel like I if, if people are going to engage in what I'm doing I should at least engage back and I don't like to give just like emojis or heart replies I, I want to actually be able to reply properly and thoroughly to people and not being able to do that has just built up this like horrible anxiety in me and now I just feel like I post things and run away um, so I can only apologize for that and I know people are like oh it's fine you don't have to but like it's something I want to do and it's something I enjoy doing and that's why I turned off the comments on a few videos at one point um, to kind of just like help with that feeling but then I got some some aggy messages about it so I was like right I'll turn them back on again um, so yeah and like not I it's it's difficult because I think what I'm feeling probably isn't hugely relatable because not everyone has the same relationship as I do with the internet because it's so much of it is like well it's my job isn't it really um to be present on the internet and put out content and low self-confidence has definitely affected like my creativity i feel like i mean i really don't post on instagram much anymore because i just don't know what it is i want to post on there and i definitely feel like my vlogs have been lacking a little something i mean i know i don't create the most incredible content or the most engaging or funny like do you know what i mean i know my content is very like it is what it is um and I don't want to be too self-deprecating just then and but I feel like there's just something missing I, maybe it's just it, the, there's a feeling in me that's missing maybe there's not something so much from the vlog the vlogs but there's something in me that feels missing however from having such a good week it feels like it's kind of like 
come back a bit um, and I feel so much better. I've had such a good week of like getting back into a routine, eating better, going to the gym, running more, um, seeing my friends and I just feel in such a better headspace than when I did at the start of the week because also at the start of the week I was having such a bad inflammation like one of my eyes was like out here and I was feeling so low about it and I was like right, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to have a real good rant about this um, but as you can see things are, are better now and I am feeling much better um, but also like not just as a, as a content creator or an influencer or whatever you want to call me, but as someone who consumes social media and uses it not just to put out content but to actually consume content, I feel really like disassociated from it right now. And I don't know if other people do. I don't know what it is. Like, is it an age thing? Is it just like, just feeling like a bit tired of it? Like the pace of it just picking back up again and being so fast and just that's not the way I consume things. I'm much more, um, you know, slower at consuming content and things and I don't know like I just go on there and I'm just a bit like Meh. I really don't enjoy what I'm seeing I don't know what it is I want to post I just don't know how I want to interact with that space um, um, so that was quite a long ramble about not much but hopefully that kind of gets across some of the kind of feelings the up and downness that I've been feeling recently and yeah I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Wow, that was a seven minute introduction. Ooh. Right, I am now off out to do some errands and then I'm going to go to the gym this evening. So I will show you the outfit that I'm wearing for this afternoon's errand running. It's very simple. I'm getting a bit of a preppy feel from it actually, now that I'm looking at it. I think it's the loafers with the cropped length of the jeans. Humongous Studio Nicholson trench coat, which I'm living in at the moment because it's still kind of cold and kind of windy here in England. This bag needs no introduction. I feel like I have just spoken about this bag way too many times at this point. Um, just a plain grey crew neck sweatshirt and then some jeans that are new in. So this week I'm going to be testing out some Arquette denim as part of a sponsorship with the brand. As many of you will know, I shop the brand very regularly. However, I have to admit their denim is not a category I've kind of like forayed into much. No reason why, just haven't. And I'm surprised I haven't because they've got lots of very classic cuts um, in some really nice washes. So I'm going to be trying out some of those cuts and some of the different washes this week. The first being the straight cropped, yes. That's right, these are cropped on me. I am five foot three, so cropped jeans are often, like finding cropped jeans is often a task. So it's nice to actually put on a pair of cropped jeans that are cropped on me. So fellow short people, take note. Um, I went up a size in these actually, because from previous experience I've found I, I go up a size in our kept trousers. So I thought I'd do the same with their jeans. And I'm glad I did because they feel nice and comfortable around here, but they're still, um, quite nice on the bum. A very true white and the denim is quite sturdy. If you look through their denim selection, some of them are described as non-stretch. Um, I think these are part of the non-stretch range. Um, they, definitely, they don't feel like they've got any stretch in them at all. They feel quite nice and rigid, which is my preference with denim. I much prefer them to be thicker um, and just a bit more, you know, like heavyweight. Um, yeah, I like these a lot and a very true straight leg as well. Like there's no clinging. I think because I've gone a size up, they sit much straighter, which I prefer. But yeah, a really, I mean, simple outfit. It doesn't get much simpler than this, does it? I'm in such a good mood this morning. <laughs> uh, going for a run obviously helped and I think this beautiful weather is definitely uplifting my mood. Um, when I've been running recently I've been listening to a podcast. I don't usually listen to podcasts, I'm a music runner but I'm a bit bored of my running playlist at the moment and to be honest I can't really be bothered to reconfigure it because I am quite particular about the type of music I listen to and the tempo and yeah I just can't really be bothered to find that music at the moment. So I've been listening to the My Dad Wrote a Porno podcast. A friend of mine was talking about it recently and she couldn't believe I'd never listened to it. I've heard of it 
but just never, I don't know, just never felt inclined to listen to it. It is hilarious. At any point that I can listen to it, I listen to it. Like any walks that I'm on, any journeys, you know, I'm listening to it. And then I started listening to it while I was running and I thought to myself, running whilst listening to a podcast that's making me laugh so much might not be the wisest of decisions. However, it's actually really fun because I get so many endorphins from running. So combine that with laughing, I feel great. I feel like hundred times better than I usually do when I'm running and I usually do feel quite good when I'm running. It also makes the run go by like really easily even when the run feels tough. I don't particularly wish time away when I'm running but there's sometimes where like a factor might be off like the music's not right or I'm not feeling right or the weather's a bit rubbish and it just feels like it drags and it feels difficult whereas when I'm listening to this podcast it I'm just like oh that's half an hour gone already and I've ran like five and a half kilometers. It's great, it just, it flies by and it makes it feel so easy um, and manageable. So I wanted to share that in case anyone else wants a new podcast to listen to whilst running, or not running, just a new podcast in general that will make you laugh a lot. My Dad Wrote a Porno is amazing and I know I'm very, very late to the party. It's like six seasons long and... Um, I've only just started listening to it. Another reason why I'm in quite a good mood this morning, this is quite a small reason. Um, obviously my skin, I'm having such a good time with my skin at the moment. My eyes are pretty much back to normal. Touch wood that they're gonna stay like this. Um, and I can start wearing a little bit more makeup, which is great because this is back in my life. Da -da -da -da. Chanel. Le Beige Water Fresh Tint. I, I love this product so, so much. Um, I know I raved about the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturiser a few months ago, and it is a great product, but it's just not quite as good as this. I, I much prefer the texture of this. It feels a lot fresher on the skin. Hello, um, just getting ready to go out for lunch, and then Dee and I are gonna go, so I'm just trying to fiddle with this. I've done something to the camera. It doesn't look right. Oof. Um, apologies if this is all a bit weird looking. I've, kind of put it on manual mode, I don't know what I've done. Oh, I really don't like this vlogging camera at all, I think I'm tempted to go back to the um, the Canon one. Anyway, we're going to go out for lunch and then we're going to top up the fridge and the kitchen cupboards so that we don't have to leave the house for the rest of the bank holiday weekend. We can just sit and chill in the garden. I'm going to do some gardening. I cannot wait. I realise I sound a bit like an old person saying that, but honestly the joy that gardening gives me is just amazing and there's a lot of weeds in the garden so I cannot wait to get it de and looking fresh. Um, anyway, today I'm going to be wearing this outfit. Um, these are the Arquette barrel leg jeans. The clue is in the title there. You can see on the sides they are slightly curved. I thought these were going to be far too long for me but pleasantly surprised that they actually look good. They, and I don't mind that they slouch just a tiny bit at the bottom there. They're really high-waisted, um, which I like, but they are quite tight. I've gone for a 25, which is my usual size. Um, however, I'm thinking maybe a 26 would have been a bit more comfortable. I think these will give. I think eventually, after a few wears, these will stretch out a bit. The denim is quite thick and rigid. These are the non-stretch, uh, part of the non-stretch range. Um, so they've got a really nice, thick texture to them. Beautiful true bright white, maybe even just ever so slightly off-white, just a touch, a very small smidgen. Um, with the jeans that I'm testing out this week, I'm just going to keep the styling really simple so that we can focus on the denim. The t-shirt's also okay, it's just one of their really basic um, women's crew neck t-shirts. I'm into these a lot, I really like these, love how relaxed they are. Um, very leg lengthening, that's for sure, I definitely look taller than five foot three. Um, Right, I need to put a bag on, get my sunglasses, and then um, head out. What, what am I doing?
guys are very, very eager right now to get an update on my eyes. Um, I'm sure many of you are on the edge of your seats wondering what earth is going on with Brittany's eyes. So I'll give you an update, or I'll bore you for approximately three minutes because there has been, there is, has been a significant change um, and some good news I would say. So in last week's video I was talking about how I was told I'd got blepharitis and it was being caused by some eczema around my eyes and I was cleaning my eyes and everything. Um, however, all of that has changed. So over the last eight weeks, that's how long this has been going on for, I know, eight weeks, I've been documenting everything that's been happening with my eyes because there's been so many different states of inflammation and different kind of things going on. I've been documenting it weekly and there's been lots of back and forth with the doctor sending her photos. I've been on several different types of antibiotics. I've had eye drops, I've had creams. The only thing that's really helped is a steroid cream. Aside from that, nothing else has really helped. So I sent her kind of like an update last week and she was like, right, okay, so nothing seems to be working. So she was like, talk to me about any allergies you've got. Talk to me about any things like this that you might have had in the past. And I, was, I said to her, I have extremely severe hay fever and a few other allergies kind of in relation to hay fever, like cats, lots of bugs, fruits, that kind of thing. Um, and she was looking, she was really examining and she was like, this doesn't look like blepharitis. She was like, I have to be honest, the type of swelling that you're getting isn't really typical of blepharitis because blepharitis normally attacks the sort of lash line, whereas I'm, the swelling for me is happening in the crease of my eye. It kind of starts here and then swells all around here. And I've actually started getting swelling underneath my eyes as well. And she was like, that's not typical of blepharitis. And she was like, based on what's also happening with your skin, Again, she was like, this looks like some irritation. It doesn't look like an infection. So her actual words were, it could be that you're having an allergic reaction to a tree pollen that's around right now. And I was like, so you're telling me I could be allergic to something that is in the air right now. What do I do with that information? <laughs> do I sit inside <laughs> until summer has ended? Um, so she has prescribed me with some extremely strong antihistamines that I've never had before, but I'm really excited because I feel like even if they don't help with this, they'll be great for preparing for hay fever season. But I have to say, I've been taking them for five days now and the itching has dramatically reduced. Like I feel like I'm, I don't want to say not itching at all because I do get some itching, but it's much less than it has been. I'm still getting inflammation, not as much but I'm still getting quite a burning sensation when they are inflamed and then they dry out loads and they feel really tight. But things feel better. I feel like I'm going into a new phase now. Um, I kind of got it under control a bit. Um, so yeah, the wild ride of what is happening with my eyes continues, but it seems like there could be a kind of solution to this, maybe a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, finally, you know, peeping through. Um, and of course I'll take you along this journey because I know you're just so invested in this riveting and engaging content that I'm giving you week in, week out right now. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I feel really good about it. I think this week was the first week I finally felt quite good about it. And I was like, okay, I feel like this is some clarity and finally something that I'm taking is, like, feels like it's working. Anyway, that's the update. Um, I told you it would be about three minutes. Hello, right, I've just put on my third and final pair of Arquette jeans to try for this video. So these are the straight cropped stretch. So they're the same as the first white pair that I tried on, but these have got some stretch to them. And I also went for my regular size. You might remember in the first pair, I went up size to a 26. With these ones, I've gone for a 25. They are extremely tight. And I think because I've gone for my regular size, they're tighter all round, but they're also even shorter and I actually think they're a little bit too short for my preference. I like my jeans to sit more on my ankle rather than above my ankle so I think these would be good for someone who's like five foot to five two possibly. I'd be interested to see how the regular length fits me because these are pretty cropped on me so I'm thinking actually the regular ones might not be too bad on me. Um, the stretch in them is minimal but it makes a difference you know sometimes with stretch jeans they feel extremely elasticated these still feel quite um quite thick but slightly less rigid when i was putting them on i put them on with 
ease, even though they're tight, put them on with ease. I could feel that there was a bit of stretch in them. And when I'm sort of like bending around in them, I can feel that there is a wee bit of stretch, but they still feel like a nice thick quality denim. Um, they are a washed black, but still very, very dark. They're not gray. I'd say they're more leaning towards black, just a tiny, tiny bit washed. But I think my favourite out of the three pairs of Arquette jeans that I've tried this week are probably the barrel leg ones because they were quite fun, a little bit more relaxed and I think they'll be great for spring and summer. Um, I also just love white jeans at the moment. That seems to be my sort of hyper fixation at the moment. I'm just going to shuffle out into the garden in this incredibly chic get up and show you what I did. Well, I, all I did was really de-weed over the weekend. But I can kind of show you how the garden is looking at the moment. So this planter, I actually didn't do anything to. I left this one. The walls of the planter itself need repainting because the frost got behind the paint over the winter and then it all peeled off. So that needs a whole repaint and then possibly some sort of like coating put over it to protect it. I need to remove the weeds around here actually. Dandelions, honestly, they have been the main culprit in the garden um, this spring. This guy's doing great though. Not sure what's going on here. I know this plant does flower into something. I can't remember what. This has loads of red flowers on. So I think once I de-weed this whole section, I'm gonna actually plant that one because it's been sat in a pot for the entirety of the winter. Over here, I think this is um, an, an anemone, is that how you pronounce it? Those beautiful white flowers that then have the kind of like dark blue buddy bits in the middle. It's not looking great at the moment. Over the winter, a weed grew in that pot and kind of overtook the entire pot. So I'm hoping that this is going to kind of come back to life again and flower. Um, on this side, the huge grasses that just they're great because they really don't need any maintenance i've just kind of pulled out any loose dead bits this one isn't looking too great but it, it will come back they always do this over here this plant although it does look like a weed isn't and it has some really beautiful yellow flowers on it in the middle of summer this guy is doing great i wasn't expecting it to grow this quickly like this tall this quickly it's almost double the height of the fence when we first got it it was like down here and now look at it then there is like an empty patch where um i, th I think something didn't really survive there there's just like a huge weed huge weed that kind of just overtaken the area so i'm going to see what this grass does if this grass kind of expands into this area i'll probably leave that blank if it doesn't because it's not looking great at the moment but like i said grass is pretty resilient it will come back eventually but if it doesn't for some reason i might put something there i'm not sure what this is probably my favorite plant in the garden it's a type of poppy that we haven't um properly figured out what it is because it's, it's humongous when it flowers doesn't flower for very long, as you know, poppies really don't last that long. Um, but inside here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Down there, there is a little, little, little one waiting to pop up. So in the next couple of weeks, that will pop up. But yeah, they're huge and they're like a really nice pink colour. Almost as big as my hand. And then on this side, this side's not the best looking side this side gets the shade for a lot of the day so it's hard to put plants here um the grass is always a good one here because grass kind of seems to do well anywhere these are slowly coming back they were they looked so bad so cut them all back and now all the lovely green grass is coming back through this plant here has some really nice yellow flowers on in the summer this one has some really nice little white ones i love this one actually because it's filled out that corner really nicely and then these also very nice when these flower they have very pale pink flowers like this on them you can see they're starting to come back oh i missed a weed i need to get that otherwise that is gonna go wild and overtake the plant um i did plant a new plant actually over the weekend to try and fill this space but this space is a funny one because i feel like the eucalyptus that is gone absolutely wild as you can see just overtakes it and anything i put here just doesn't seem to uh really survive that long 
this grass doesn't it's such a small grass i don't think it's going to get that much bigger um and then yes yeah, so this is the plant i planted because it says it can live in all locations so we shall see it's got this plant already oh <laughs> that one's kind of done its flowering this one i think it should be all right hopefully some of the buds yeah like these are these are opening up so i'll monitor that but i, don't, I really don't want to have to move it because i get a bit upset when they get moved too often so that is the garden at present need to do some sweeping up because the birds love the bark need to also do a bark top up as well actually but yeah i can't wait to, for it to all start flowering because once it's fully like in bloom everything's really bushy and luscious and it's such a lovely space to be in i know i say this all the time but honestly the weather over the past week has made my mood just like 10 times better it has really lifted me this week um I think the fact that literally the sun coming out and the, the weather, like the temp going up to double digits, is such a reflection of how we've been starved of sun here in England over the past however many months. Honestly, it feels like we've been waiting for this for about six months, um, but it feels good. Anyway, this is me signing off this week's vlog because I'm now walking to my studio space to edit this vlog. So. I hope you all had a lovely um, Easter, whether you celebrate anything at that time of year or not, or whether you just used it as a time to just sit down and do nothing. I hope you all had a great weekend. Um, and 